Hey, what's going on, people? We're going to get started soon. Talk about retirement accounts. Let me <clears throat> unloosen this. Hey, what's going on? Who's out there? Talk to me. We'll get started in a few minutes once everybody hops on. We're going to talk about our favorite subject, retirement plans tonight. So uh, let me know who's hopping on. Just drop me a comment saying, hey, and we'll get started in uh, just a few minutes. I don't know how much of a delay it is on our end, but we will talk soon. about this thing called retirement. I'm gonna move this so I can see the stuff a little bit better. What's going on, Davina? I just noticed they have this, uh, this feature about sharing it, so feel free to share with your friends and stuff and then we'll get started in just a couple minutes. How are things going? Are you back here now or are you still down in Atlanta? <laughs> For sure, all you got to do is let me know. So you got good weather then, nothing like uh, what we keep experiencing up here. But we're going to get started as soon as we get a few more people on. What's going on, Markeisha? Cannoneer, I haven't forgot about you either. Hope you and the family are well. Still trying to kind of fight in the cold, but I'll get over it. Everybody knows with these little kids, they just keep spreading germs. Yeah, Davina, stop, stop telling us about uh, weather in Atlanta. Hey, Tiffany, you know, for a small price, it's yours. Nothing is off the table. Matter of fact, I have two chairs. Two for the price of one. You come with the right price. So we'll get started in just a couple minutes. Do me a favor. Um, I know Davina already has, but do me a favor. Just share it on your page just so we can talk um, to other people and really get the conversation going. Because really, uh, more than me kind of doing a lecture... I want to just really answer questions that you all might have. I'll do a brief introduction and then we'll get into a few things in just a few minutes. I guess, Tiffany, I should ask why, why you got the chair and, or why you bought the couch and didn't get the chairs. Miss Jones, how are you? It's been a while. It's funny. It's like most of the people on here so far are uh, former co-workers. So we'll get started in just a couple minutes. I'm trying not to squint. I really need to uh, do something about my vision, but that's another story.
And as we're getting ready to uh, get started, you know, feel free to even think about now what your questions are, and then we'll get on in a couple minutes, and we'll get started. Now, as you can tell, I'm sitting in my living room, so I will give fair warning that uh, I'm trying not to be BBC tonight. Usually the time where uh, the kids are trying to get wound down ready for bed, so... You know, if you hear some clanging and banging, nobody is dying. It's just the kids doing what they do. Omar, how are you? It's been a long time, my friend. Hope you are well. As I said before, you know, feel free to go ahead and uh, share. Donna! Seriously, almost everybody on here are people that I... Matter of fact, I think almost everybody on here I've worked with at some point. Mike, Mr. Turkey, <laughs> how are you? So we'll get started in just a second. My beautiful wife just joined, so she'll tell me, uh, she'll give me my honest feedback later afterwards. Good thing there's no volume on these phones, otherwise you'll hear my children screaming. But, uh, uh, Omar, no, I actually do not miss that, <laughs> miss that orange apron, though I'm in there all the time. For y'all who don't understand the orange apron, Omar and I used to work at Home Depot together years ago. I was probably, man, a good 10 plus years ago. That was fun times, though. So, so let's get started. Uh, so what I wanted to do is just really discuss you know, retirement planning as a whole, uh, because one of the things I realize is that a lot of people have questions regarding it, especially when it comes to things like IRAs and 401ks, and really what are the best options for themselves. So uh, what I wanted to do is just go through some different scenarios with you. And even as I'm talking now, feel free to start asking your questions. Um, you know, when I look at just my general practice as a financial planner, one of the uh, major things that I deal with, as a matter of fact, the majority of my clients are for retirement planning. So I have a lot of experience in this area. I've been in the business for, wow, 12 years now. And over the years, the need for financial planning is becoming more and more important simply because uh, for folks like my parents' age and older, that was like the last generation of people who have pensions, except if you work for like a government entity or something like that, or, you know, some of the people who are teachers and things like that. So needless to say, retirement planning is important because you literally these days have to do it on your own. And one of the things I also read for younger people um, who would be considered millennials is that on average, a lot of millennials have never started anything for retirement planning. So one of the things I want to talk about is really the importance of retirement planning and just some general things that you can do. Now, first, let's look at things like your 401k. If you are a teacher or work for a hospital, you have uh, what's called a 403B, of course. But traditionally, it pretty much works the same. So the idea behind it is that the money that you put into it will, of course, be deducted from your current taxes. And then as you grow older, the idea is that when you are retired and in the lower income tax bracket, uh, the money will come out taxed in. But for a lot of people, uh, especially my clients who are big three workers, is that they're finding that their taxes are actually the same as they were working because they have things like Social Security, pensions, and so on. But the 401k is really a good place to start for retirement planning if your job offers it. Now, the thing with the 401k uh, that I would say about it is that you have 
the first choose um, for one how much you're going to put away. Now, don't make the mistake that many people make and they say, because I'm not going to be at this job for five years or I don't plan on being here 10 years, that I'm not going to start. Because a lot of people who say something is temporary ends up being years and years. I remember a coworker who worked uh, for the company for literally 10 years and they never started their 401k contributions simply because they didn't expect to stay there. So when you are approaching your 401k plan, uh, one of the things you have to determine, again, is how much do you want to put away? Now, the thing about the 401k plan is that the money that you use and that you put in there is going to come out before you are taxed. So, for example, let's say you make $1,000 and you decide to put 10% away of your income into the 401k plan. So every time you are paid that $1,000, they will take out the $100, and then let's assume you have another $100 for medical. Those are all uh, come out pre-tax. So then you are taxed on the $800. But as the money is going in, that's really the first part. Then you have to determine how you will invest it. Now, these days, 401k plans and 403b plans have uh, come a lot from what they were previously. Uh, there's been a lot of scrutiny on fees that are being charged within plans and the options that are available. So let's start there about your 401k fund options. Typically, you're dealing with some sort of mutual fund option. Now, the mutual fund is for those who aren't that familiar with mutual funds, all a mutual fund is is a collection of different investments that could be stocks, that could be bonds, and so on. And within that fund, the fund manager itself is the one who owns it. So you don't own any of the individual stocks or bonds or anything like that. So what happens is that through the plan, if you buy that, you actually own shares of it. But one of the things that happens within that plan, too, is that if your company matches your contribution, you can uh, also, they will, I'm sorry, if your company matches your contribution, if they're a publicly traded company, sometimes they will end up uh, matching your contribution in company stock. So you want to make sure that uh, you don't end up overweighting your holdings in company stock. So let's pause for a second there and give me your questions regarding your 401k plan so I can answer those, whatever they may be, and I'll do my best to answer them. Alvin, thanks for hopping in, my friend. Alvin, just like me, also works in the financial services, so good guy. Another guy from college. So while we're on the subject of, you know, your 401k options and things like that, like I said, I'll pause there and tell me what, ask me your questions about, you know, your 401k plans. Because I know for some they can be a little complex and then for others it's not that big of a deal. And then if there's nothing at this point, then I'll, uh, so let's see, Davina said, what should we be doing in addition to the 401k plan? Well, I, uh, Davina, give me a little bit more, <laughs> I don't want to be old and broke. Yeah, I don't want you to be old and broke either. Matter of fact, one of my clients, I have a client who I meet with quite often, and every time we talk, they say, I, I want to make sure I'm not eating dog food. So um, give me a little bit more specific. Are you referring to general investments or retirement accounts um, as a whole? Uh, give me a specific about what you should be doing, and then I'll come back to that. Okay, so Omar, you're asking the same question. Okay, so one of the things that I would recommend uh, considering is if you are specifically looking to save for retirement, 
consider doing a Roth in addition to your 401k. Now, the one thing you have to be careful about is with the Roth, you can only make certain amount of money before they will either reduce what you can put in or tell you that you can't put anything at all. So one option you can do is even within your 401k, if they offer you a Roth 401k, you can do that option. But keep in mind that uh, with the Roth 401k, that money is coming out after tax. So if we go back and consider if you're doing the Roth 401k, and let's say, again, you're putting away 10%, well, they are going to take your $1,000 in our example, take out your, uh, your medical expenses, pay your taxes, and let's say after all that, your $1,000 is now 750 because of those expenses. Then they take the $100 out for the Roth. Now, the Roth IRA works different. You don't get any tax deduction for that. But with doing the Roth, what that allows you to do is save money for retirement that won't be taxed later on. Because one of the things we often have to say is that all these rules are now. Who knows what the future will be? So you want to make sure that if you can help it, you do both money that will be taxed so that you can get a tax deduction now and then money that won't be taxed later. That way you have an option of pulling where your money comes from. So when you go in retirement, if let's say income taxes are high, then you can pull from your asset that has income tax free money. And then if taxes are low, naturally you'll go to the account that uh, is taxed at the uh, normal rate. Now, there's also an option for people who want to have after-tax money if you make too much and you can't contribute to a Roth. It's called a backdoor Roth IRA. So I'm just going off the top of my memory, but to do a Roth IRA, I want to say your income can't be over a hundred something thousand a year. So if you have income that exceeds that, what you can do is make regular IRA contributions, what are called non-deductible, meaning that you put the money in the retirement account and you don't get any deduction. And then you can do a Roth conversion and convert that to the Roth. But keeping in mind when you're going to either a 401k or an IRA, that's really just the tax treatment of the account. You can you still have to select how you're going to invest your money. And that's where working with someone like myself, a financial advisor, is there to give you some guidance. And let me answer the Venus question. You said, is the 401k enough to survive off of without completely downgrading life? Uh, No, I would say you should be doing some other things. Like I said, consider a Roth. You can open just regular investment accounts. You know, you don't have to necessarily uh, only do retirement accounts. You can do regular mutual fund or stock accounts over the years, too. You know, one of the things that's going to be a foundation of anything you do for retirement is going to be completely or lowering debt as much as you can and keeping yourself on track with a budget. And budgeting is something that I will touch on in another uh, discussion because anything that you do financially is going to be based on your ability to budget your money. So uh, hopefully that answers it. Davina says, how else should we be saving? Um, What I would say is you want to make sure you have first an emergency fund. So, uh, you know, people will previously say three months is expenses. Some people say six months. I typically recommend people to go out as far as even 12 months if they can. So if your income or if your monthly expenses are $2,000 a month, you want to try to have a good 25000 in savings. And I know that seems like uh, a high amount of money, but 
what we've seen, especially coming out of 2008 and the recession, is that people were very slow getting back to work. So if people had money saved or they didn't save enough, what they found is that any retirement accounts they ended up devouring just to live off of. And I understand you have to do what you have to do, but what you don't want to be is what we call uh, 401k poor, meaning that the only money you have saved is in your retirement account because if an emergency happens and you need to get to some money, you know, you know, pulling money out of a retirement account, especially before retirement age, it's not going to be favorable for taxes. And if you find yourself out of work or in a big pinch, I mean, you can see five, 10 years worth of savings go away very quickly. So hopefully that answers it. So Marquise, you got to tell me what that, I'm sorry, I'm on my phone, so I, I couldn't see what that emoji is. You have to tell me what that means, that little face. Um, so Omar says, my insurance agent mentioned Roth IRAs. How do they differ from uh, other? So I will go over that again. So fundamentally, um, IRAs are self-directed accounts, meaning that they're your accounts. They're not owned by a company like your 401k plan is unless you work for a smaller company. But what happens is with those accounts, you are putting money on an after-tax basis. So as long as you stay within the income parameters of which they allow, if you're under 50, you can put $5,500 a year away in a Roth. Now, the way the Roth works is that money that goes into it, you do not get any tax deduction like you do on your 401k. But when that money comes out, it grows income tax free for retirement. So let's say over the years you save $50,000 for in a Roth and then the money grows to $150,000. As long as you are 59 and a half, when that money comes out, it's income tax free. So the biggest difference, again, is one is tax deferred and tax deductible now. Or I'm sorry, one is tax deductible now, which is the 401k or in some instances, the traditional IRA. And when that money comes out, you pay taxes on it later. With the Roth, you're taking money that you already paid taxes on, putting it in an account to where the money grows tax deferred, meaning you're not paying taxes on your growth. And then as long as you are 59 and a half, when you pull that money out, that's income tax free. So whether it's the 401k or the IRA, you still have to choose how you are going to invest that money. And one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen people make, uh, because I know uh, investing is scary for people because for some it's new or they believe it is risky. But what you don't want to do is to put money in a retirement account and then have it sitting in cash, meaning things like uh, IRA savings accounts in a bank or uh, money markets, because you have two risks that you face considering investing and retiring. One is if I invest my money, there's a risk that I will lose it, of course depending on what type of investment you own. But then what also the risk you have to consider is what happens if you put the money in a retirement account and it doesn't grow. Now you have the risk of running out of money. And for most people, that risk um, is scarier than losing money. And I will tell you this, uh, a lot of people have saved their money well but have been too conservative and have gotten bitten because of that. And I'll tell you, you know, every Walmart greeter is not there because they, uh, because they want to be. So I'll just say that. And what number, what number are we talking about? Uh, Marquisha, you say you were shocked. And uh, yeah, let, let me know what number you say is high and I'll come back to that, Marquisha. And Omar, you said, do you have any fears that the market will crash again 
that will cause us to lose money in our 401k? Oh, of course. I mean, I wouldn't call it a fear, but it happens. Um, so it's just a matter of, it's not a matter of if, it's when, and it's how much, right? The market drops. And if you look at patterns from going back to the crash of even the Great Depression, every few years you have um, a dip. Now, seeing 5% declines uh, in this market can be very normal. And matter of fact, if we look last year, uh, between December and then coming into about February, we saw something very odd. We saw two 10% declines in the market in six months. That's very odd. Now, we know if you're paying attention, markets have hit an all-time high. But the last time that that happened, where we saw two 10% declines in a short amount of period, obviously we looked at a big crash. I've actually been, and, it, and this is not me telling you to go out and do anything, but I've actually uh, been trying to caution my clients on what's going on out there for the past couple years. You know, economically, I don't think our country is in that great of a shape. I mean, I think there's some things going on in the administration that's trying to spur it along. But, um, yeah, man, I, I think the imminent decline is definitely out there. Um, so yeah, ho hopefully that answers it, but yeah, I, I definitely think we're going to see a decline. It's just a matter of, uh, when and how much, but, but not if it's definitely going to happen. Well, I can't say definitely because at this point I'd already expected it to happen and it has not. It's odd. It's just continues to go. So we'll see. Well, okay, Marquisha. And, and I know that that seems a little high, um, but I'm just going from experience on seeing people, um, you know, get out of work, especially in the area where I am. You know, I'm in Detroit and there's been a lot of, uh, you know, you, you see people who are also in different industries who have uh, a high tendency to be laid off part times of the year or just have jobs eliminated overall. And just going off experience, I've seen a lot of people kind of blow through savings I mean, think about it. Think about how much money you have saved in the bank now. And obviously, you don't have to comment on it. But if you had no more income, how long would that last you? And that's what you really have to think about. You should be saving both in savings and in 401ks and stuff like that. But you want to make sure you're pacing yourself on both ends. You don't want to just load up on a retirement account and not have any savings. And again, savings is for one part emergency, but also for other savings goals. So things like if you're going to buy a car, if you are going to, uh, you're funny. That's what I'm saying. So that's why you have to, you, you want to build that, uh, that emergency fund up. But again, that savings, you know, one thing that you want to consider is why you are saving. You want to make sure that every dollar you have has a name on it, right? And you might even consider opening multiple savings accounts at your bank so that you know every dollar that's flowing is going somewhere. So if you have a goal of going on a trip to Cancun in the next year, make sure that money is set aside. If you have goals on buying a house or a car, make sure that money is set aside. But what you want to make sure is if you invest money, you want to make sure you're not investing money that you will need. And that's another problem with, again, not budgeting and not having savings is that, you know, you invest money for the future. But if something happens, if you have to go back in and get it, it's just not going to work for you. Excuse me. I mean, I know you look on the news and all this other stuff and you see all these day trading things. And, you know, your best friend is not going to be trying to time the stock market if that's where you choose to invest your best friend is going to be time itself in the market, letting your money accumulate, grow over time without touching it. So let me see. Any way to protect against it? Now, Omar, you, uh, man, that's, that's a tough question because um, a lot of it is based on what the plan offers you uh, within your 401k. So, 
depending on who you work for, some of the 401ks have um, like cash accounts. And really, for some people, when those heavy downturns happen, uh, they'll put their money there. It won't grow much, but you won't lose much either. But the issue with moving the money into those accounts is that, um, you know, if for any reason, let's say the dollar, the U.S. dollar begins to decline, then even having it in a safe place is not really that safe. Uh, one of the things that people will often use, and again, this is not uh, my recommendation, is uh, precious metals, things like, you know, gold and silver are what people will typically use to protect against those downturns, but typically they're doing that out of their own pocket because obviously a 401k plan is not going to offer you that. Now you can do that with a retirement account like an IRA, but um, yeah. And, and one of the things too about if you move money into a cash account is that you have to make sure uh, that you are watching it because you don't want to forget and not move the money back in the market. Right. We, we know about the 2008 crash and how devastating that was for people. But I remember reading an article that said what was more devastating for people is the fact that uh, those people who never put their money back in the market and then they ended up, uh, you know, it hurt them because they saw the market surge way up and they never put their money back out there. So hopefully that answers it a little bit. So, Marquise, you said, I'm meeting with a financial planner Monday. Anything I should ask specifically? Yeah, there's a bunch of questions you should ask. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, is this somebody through your job or is this somebody you're meeting outside of work? And specifically, what is it that you are uh, meeting them for? Is it for retirement planning? Is it for educational planning for your son or is it just in general and uh tell me that and then I'll, I'll come right back to that so omar i'm very familiar with vanguard vanguard is one of the more respectable and reputable uh companies out there you know vanguard's claim to fame is that they've had some pretty consistent funds do well but one of the things about Vanguard that really separates them from a lot of people is Vanguard is one of the lowest cost funds uh, out there. You know, they do exchange traded funds and mutual funds, but a lot of them you can get for a pretty lower cost. So, you know, I'm very familiar with them. They're a good company. As a matter of fact, I use them for some of my clients. Okay, so Marquisha, one of the things you want to do when you are approaching a financial advisor is uh, I'll talk slow so that maybe you can make notes in your phone or even write it down. Hopefully that light behind me is not too bad. So uh, one of the things you want to ask is um, what that advisor's experience is, right? Do Did they go to school for it? And that's not the end all be all. There's a lot of great financial advisors that didn't go to school for that. You want to know how long they've been in the business? You want to know um, what investment licenses they have. Um, you want to know their overall approach to financial management, right? You don't want somebody who's just going to be a product pusher. You want to know um, if they are going to take a team approach or is it just based off of what they think? Uh, one of the things you also want to know is how they get paid. You know, some financial advisors get paid on commission, which means when they sell you something, they make their money. Uh, then there's others who do what's called fee based. Fee based says is that they charge you either a flat fee um, every year or they charge you a fee based on the size of your account and that they'll take their fee out of your account. You want to know if they have options to offer you different investment companies or can they only represent one company? Uh, for instance, in, in my practice, 
we are an independent group, so we don't own any of the investments we offer our clients. So we can take a pretty unbiased approach. So if you go back to like Omar's question about Vanguard, right? Vanguard has their own products. Fidelity has their own products. Uh, there's a bunch of different companies out there. JP Morgan Chase has their own products. But you want to make sure that even if the advisor works for a company that can offer you the own company's products, you want to make sure that they have the options to represent other people. Because if they don't, you know, you might not be getting an unbiased opinion. And I mean, I can't blame them. I mean, if I own the car lot and you're coming to buy a car, you know, I'm not going to send you across the street to the other car lot when I have my own cars, if you know what I mean. So there's a bunch of different questions um, you can ask, but really you just want to mainly make sure that you're comfortable with the person because whether somebody recommended them or not, that's not going to be the end all be all because uh, you want to make sure that the person is doing what's right for you and not just going off what they did for your friend because your needs may not be the same. So, you know, hopefully that, that helps answer some of your questions. Um, but go out there and Google questions to ask a financial advisor. There's a lot of ones out there, but, you know, you, you mainly want to make sure that you understand their practice, what they're doing, and that they're looking out for your best interests. So hopefully that uh, answers it. So let me see. So that's what Mark, he says, so that's what I worry about because I met with him with, met with a different employee and she was pushy. Oh, Primerica. See, why you go there? Um, all right, let me see if I can say this with tact. Um, I would, okay, here, here's my, I, I'm trying not to throw everybody in the same boat, but I know a lot of people who have had experience with Primerica and um, very few people I, I've talked to that I know has had direct experience with them has, has been a good one. I can't say that's everybody's case, but, um, you know, a lot of the people that I've come con in connection with with the company um, didn't seem like they had a whole lot of experience in the business. And look, we all are new to something at some point. So I'm not saying that the person does not know anything, but, um, you know, I know another thing as well is that some companies can only offer certain things, right? So if for instance, you want whole life insurance, um, certain companies don't sell it on the other end. If you want term insurance, some companies may not sell that. Well, I don't know of any insurance companies that don't, but I'm just trying to give you a contrast. Also, make sure you do this. I forgot to, I should have told you this. One thing about financial advisors is that because we're dealing with the public's money, our personal records are public knowledge. So if you go to a thing called broker check, you can Google it. Broker check will allow you to look up your advisor. You'll be able to see what state they operate in. You can know what investment licenses they have. You'll know how many companies they've worked for. You'll know if they had any client complaints against them that have been filed. So there's a lot that you can find out about that advisor before you actually go in. And I will also say, too, that, you know, a client complaint is not the end of the world. Sometimes people get confused. Sometimes people uh, just flat out lie. Now, if you see somebody with a bunch of client complaints, that's probably uh, a good indication of how they run their business. So do your research and look, don't let anybody pressure you into anything. Right. Take your time and make sure you're making an educated decision and ask a lot of questions. Um, this is your money. This is a big decision that you're making. So if somebody either has problems with you asking questions like, hey, how do you make money? Or if they have problems with uh, answering your questions and they are condescending towards you, 
probably not the person that you want to deal with. Um, what I find in my practice is that if somebody's asking me a lot of questions, what it does is it removes a lot of the barriers to doing business. So, you know, a- ask your questions, but don't let nobody push you in anything. What I will say is this, though, because I'm coming from the advisor side as well, is be honest, right? If you're talking to the advisor and you don't understand, don't nod and say yes. Tell them, I don't understand. If you need to think about it, tell them, let me think about it and commit to a time where you will make a decision. You know, when I'm sitting with clients, what I typically tell them is this. There's two answers. Yes or no. And both are acceptable. I just want you to tell me one. Because what you don't want to do is, you know, feel like you're trying to court somebody, like you're trying to go out on a date and the person is not really interested. So just be honest. Um, but but take your time. Don't, don't let them uh, pressure you into anything. So Omar says, our company matches up to 4%. And then half a percent for anything after that. So I'm putting 6% in for a total of 10. Is that too much or should I drop a couple percent and use that for an IRA? Or is it all about what I can afford? Yeah, Omar, you just answered your own question. It is definitely all about what you can afford. I don't think there's ever a point where you can say, oh, I'm saving too much for retirement. Um, As a matter of fact, what I would recommend you to do is go to Vanguard's website. They should have a, a retirement calculator out there. And what it will allow you to do is plug in some of your information now, like how much you're saving for retirement or how much money you think you'll need on a monthly basis for retirement. And they'll kind of reverse engineer it and say, hey, here's how much you're going to need to save. And listen, I will tell you that number is going to shock you. You're going to think it's too much, but no, it's not a matter of saving too much. I mean, in your 401k, you can save roughly $18,000 a year. And if your income is not too high, you can put another $5,500 a year into a Roth. So between the two, I mean, you're putting $23,000, $24,000 a year away. So no, it's not... Uh, that you're putting too much. You want to put in as much as you can, but again, make sure that you handle your debt. If you have debt, make sure you're paying that stuff off and make sure you have a good savings account. But no, like, put it in as much as you can. Hi, thank, thanks, Alvin. So I knew you was going to put that out there. So Alvin just put the link out there for you, Markeisha. And you can go ahead and uh, check out that advisor. What you'll also find, and I'm not joking, is that a lot of people exaggerate their credentials. So you'll have some people calling themselves financial planners, financial advisors, and you have to know how to qualify that statement. There are some people out there who will call themselves financial planners, and they don't have any license to even offer securities, right? They may just be insurance agents. Or they may just be the other way around. Or some people don't have any license to do anything. So do your research on that person. You can put their name into Google. And if they're legit, they should pop up. And Omar said, and do you recommend pre-tax contributions or getting it taxed at the time of withdrawal? Uh, I recommend, well... I I use recommend lightly because I don't know your individual situation, but what I would say do is if you can do both pre and post tax, right? Do regular 401k, do Roth as well. And you want to save both on a consistent basis. And I will tell you this too. um, Do not despise small beginnings. Um, If you open up a retirement account, A lot of mutual funds out there, they will allow you to start as small as $50, some are $150, $250 and up, as long as you make a periodic contribution into it. So, you know, start off small and just steadily increase your way up. And if you get that thing going and you put money in on a regular basis and you get some growth, then you'll be good. Uh, Let me backtrack one thing and say two. You know, within 401k plans, one of the more popular things we see now is these target funds. 
Target funds are basically funds that are built. It's a portfolio of stocks, bonds, all kinds of stuff based on your age and when they think you will retire. So if you don't know how to select the right funds for your 401k, excuse me, go with the target fund. And I will also say this, you know, all these questions that you guys are asking me, I'm loving them. But call the plan administrator who's handling your uh, company's plan, right? So Omar, in your case, Vanguard, call them. Listen, they're getting paid to do that, right? They're not just there just to hold your funds. Typically, there is somebody who can talk to you over the phone uh, with that company. And sometimes they even come out to your job. So even if they can't give you direct recommendations, they will at least be able to give you a little bit more information about the plan. So no matter who your company uses, utilize that asset because trust me, you are paying for it. So make sure you get that advice. So Marquisha says, where can I go to get a Roth IRA? So uh, you can basically go practically anywhere. Um, you can open up one online through like a place like a Fidelity um, or like a Charles Schwab or something like that. You can also uh, go through most financial planning companies if you're going to invest it. If you just want to start off and make sure you have money going in there and build it up, you can do it at your local bank. Pretty much anywhere you can do um, a Roth. So hopefully that answers your question. And if you decide to work with this financial advisor, um, they should be able to open up a Roth for you. Again, Roths are very common. So almost anywhere, whether it's a bank, credit union, you just have to decide exactly how you want that money invested. And if you're going to do stuff like mutual funds or stocks, you can do pretty much any, any company that you can name that you're familiar with. So let me move this up a little closer so I can read it. Is one place better than the other? Uh, not necessarily. Yes and no, right? So one place being better than the other is really going to be predicated on do they have options that you're interested in? And are you comfortable with the advice that you're getting? So uh, one of the things that you may or may not know is that not all banks offer investment services, right? So if your goal is to set up a Roth and invest in things like mutual funds, then that bank or credit union may not be the place to go if they can't offer it to you. Now on the flip side, I used to be an advisor at a bank. Um, so most of the local banks there in Cleveland will be able to open up one for you. Um, or you could just do, uh, I, I would probably say if that's your first starting place, uh, because typically if you're coming to like a financial planner, financial advisor, you have to have uh, certain amounts to um, invest with that particular advisor. So I would say start at your bank. Um, also, one of the things you can do is call the company that offers your uh, 401k plan or 403b plan and ask them if there's somebody you could speak to even if it's uh, possibly online to open up that that Roth so Omar said do you get to choose the stocks where your money is invested so Omar um, you get to choose the stocks if you open up like a you know, E-Trade account or something like that or a Charles Schwab account where you're paying seven ninety five or so uh, for every trade if you want to buy individual stocks. That's an account that you're pretty much doing on your own. Um, if you are buying a mutual fund, then no, you do not choose the investment. The mutual fund company has a fund manager inside of it. And what that fund manager is doing is that they'll collect money from you, me, everybody else, and then they will give you shares of that fund based on how much you put in there. But the mutual fund 
sets an objective uh, for the fund. And usually that objective is right in the title of the fund. Um, so if you have like a Vanguard S&P fund, then they're going to buy pretty much all the stocks that are in the S&P 500. So no, you aren't selecting anything. That's the fund manager's job. If you want to do it on your own, then that's where something like an E-Trade account will come into it. And look, you can do both. It's just a matter of do you trust yourself to make those selections um, or do you want to rely on somebody else? Because mutual funds have fees. Don't let anybody tell you they don't. Even if you're not buying them up front or paying them up front, mutual funds have internal operating costs called expense ratios. And those are some of the things you want to be careful that you look at because, you know, what I mean, some of these funds can eat away at your returns every year. So let's see. So any other questions? What, what time are we at? Oh wow, we're almost at eight o'clock. I let time get away from me. So uh, any other questions? If not, I will uh, shut it down, and then we'll we'll try to get together next week on a, another subject or we can follow up with this or do more um, stuff like that so here's what I ask is that before we get off um, if you know do me a favor um, like the video share it um, do me a favor like my business page if you haven't and then we'll just keep doing these away uh, every week so all right everybody have a good night talk to you later